Okay. Thank you all for joining me then. I'll make a start on the display of uh, late female in Paris. I can come to it. Right, is that, all, is that showing all right, mate? Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, that's perfectly okay, yeah. Okay then, right, I'm just going to try and get rid of my... Yeah, so, oops, sorry. I shall go back to the beginning, hold on a minute. Um, sorry, I was just trying to, oh, damn it, sorry. I was just trying to get rid of the icon to the right hand side. Oh, the clutter around the edge, I know. Yeah, I know the problem. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of them. Okay, all right. Oh, cool to hear. Right, okay. Start at the beginning. Uh, late female essentially started in Paris, or it, well, it started in Paris and then extended to other cities in France in July um, 1863. And they started with three offices. The three offices were all in the commercial center of the capital, the head post office and two district offices. I put all the rates up there at the top um, and we'll take them in stages as we go through. There were three, the, the intention was to allow businesses to post letters at the last possible moment in the evening. They didn't get very much extra. Um, hold on a minute, I'm just going to try and get rid of it. Can't rid of it. Okay, sorry. More coming in, I'll have to break off as people come in. Um, where was I? The three periods extra on top after the normal collection. And the first 15 minutes cost an extra 20 centimes. The next 15 up to 30 minutes, another 40 centimes. And then at the head post office only, a third collection was available 45 minutes after the normal collection. And that cost 60 centimes extra. So it's quite a lot, really. I mean, your basic postage is 20. So third late fee, there's one there. It's 80 centimes, four times the basic rate. But people did pay it. They were prepared to. It was businesses sending letters that they were desperate to get on to the last trains leaving Paris in the evening. So they would get to their destination in the provinces or, or their destinations. Um, early the following morning, basically. There's the location of the three offices that they started with. And as you can see, they're all very, very much in the centre of the stock exchange, the head post office, and the Rue de Clary, which is also in the nearby. There we have an early one, July 63. Uh, remember in September, the Post offices in Paris were renumbered. So J became one, DS2 became Office 24. But for some reason, they went on using their older caches for or state stamps for quite a long time. Um, there's DS2, the Rue de Clary, the first um, late fee and the second. There's a third late fee uh, from the head post office. You've got the number there. In the top. They all had octagonal caches to make it quite clear the status of these letters. And there we have E3, the third late collection available at the late head post office. But they were very, very tight on their timings. Um, the one, the second letter there has been put in just too late. It's paid 20 centimes extra for the first late fee, but it's been put in 
just after the 15 minutes. So it's missed it. And it would have been held back and sent the next day. Uh, the 20 centim extra would have been lost and no extra time gained. So it's quite uh, harsh, but that was the way they did it. No. Just. Oops, sorry. Damn this. Bloody hell. Uh, there's a plaster of bush, yes, in November 63, still using Office J. Um, they did eventually change to one that you see below it, plaster of bush. There's a second late fee at the top and a first one below. Most late fees are to the inland or to European destinations, such as Switzerland, Germany, close to France. But you do get overseas one sometimes um, where they're trying to catch the packet boats. The top one is the only one recorded at the moment to Australia. And again, from Marseille, the P&O packets ran once a month. So they really didn't want to miss the packet. So in this case, they paid 20 centimes extra on top of the postage to Australia just to make quite sure that they got to the boat in time. And the one below is the United States. And again, it's been posted um, at the last possible moment, the third collection on the 21st of July. And it catches the Cunard steamer Asia leaving Liverpool on the following day. So it did work, it cost you a bit, but it worked. Now there. There's an underpayment for the insufficient for the third, in other words, it's been paid for the second late fee collection, but uh, it's been put in in the third late fee period. So again, it's just missed it. And again, would have been held back and sent the next day. And the one below it, that did make it in time. That was okay. That was a second late fee period to Switzerland. The top one, this is a curious one. I'm quite sure it's correct, but it's not right, really. It's got E3, it says E3 there. And it's not Daniel Cache. But all the postage is 20 centimes. There's no late fee postage whatsoever. So somebody must have put it in the box and hope they would get away with it, presumably. It's been marked very clearly for the third um, delay for the third collection. But the post, the stamp itself, it wasn't cancelled in Paris. It's, it was cancelled when it arrived, which is very curious. The gros chief uh, 2330 of the destination office, Melee, the dam. And you can see below, they, I put the back stamps there. You can see it didn't actually leave. It was posted on the 28th. But again, it was held over and got uh, sent on on the 29th on the Paris terrain ambulance TPO. And it got there on the 29th, but again, too late to be delivered. So it wasn't delivered until the 1st of March. But why the stamp wasn't cancelled in Paris is a mystery. Anyway. Postage rates increased on the 1st of September, but uh, they left the late fee supplements exactly the same. And the top one there is The first late fee is now 45 centimes, and the one below it is again the second late fee period. It's April 72, and the rates went up in September 71. They generally removed from sale the Napoleon stamps as quickly as they possibly could. But this is a very late use of small value Napoleons in the, with series, quite nice, really, very unusual. And, Saint Honore, Rue Saint Honore, had a circular cache, not an octagonal one. Third late fee now, of course, 85 centimes at the top there, and the second late fee at the bottom there, 45 centimes. Postcards were never specifically included in the regulations for the late fee. Postcards appear in what, 1873 in France, and by tolerance, um, 
they were accepted for late fee. Late fees were accepted. So the top one is your 15 centime postcard with the 20 centime for the first late fee period. And then when the postcard rate went down to 10 centimes in May 1878, the supplement again still remained at 20 centimes and it was accepted. Postage rates were again revised in May 1878 when France basically moved to uniform postage of 15 centimes for a letter. But again, they stopped with the same supplements, really, which is a bit curious. But while they didn't bring them down, who knows? But there we are. So the top one there is a 15 centimes the postage and the 20 centimes for the first late fee. And then the second late fee below it, 55 centimes. Another couple there, a second one. Although they were using octagonal and hexagonal date stamps to clearly differentiate late fee material and to make sure they wasn't held up, a lot of offices, as the number of offices increased, a lot of them simply used um, circular caches. So the town hall, one at the bottom, the Hotel de Ville at the bottom there, has got E2, second late fee, 55 centimes, but the circular cancel. And there's a third late fee. Um, it's now 15 centimes plus 60. So it's five times the basic rate now. But uh, there we are, they, they, they did use it. And the bottom one there, you've got to be careful with late fee. You do see late fee caches, date stamps used incorrectly sometimes. Um, you've got to check the rates. This one just doesn't work, whichever way you try it. It's got E3 very clearly in the, the cache. But if it's third weight, if it's the third period, then it's overpaid by 10 centimes. There's no way you can work that out with 60 centimes for the third late fee. Um, and the balance of 25 is neither one thing nor the other. There we are, one of these conundrums, never get the answer to it. It's either overpaid or it's a heavy second. Uh, step one. Finally, in 1887, they did reduce to flat rates of 15 centimes extra, um, which did make bring it make it a little bit more accessible. It was a flat fee of 15 centimes for an extra half hour in district post offices and for one hour at the head post office. And the top letter there, they still carried on putting things like E1 and E2, but uh, there's no point anymore because it was simply the one uh, delay, if you like. Uh, so the top's a letter card, uh, 15 plus 15, and the letter card at the bottom there, again, 15 plus 15. UPU rates. 25 centimes for a foreign letter, plus 15 centimes for the late fee, so 40 centimes in all. Um, Lorraine, then, yeah, that's part of Germany then. And again, postcards or postcards still accepted, no problem, although they weren't included on the right uh, tables. There's a couple more postcards, one to Holland and an inland one. The same rates, 10 centimes. By now, though, the flat rate was reduced to five centimes. And from now until the Great War, if you like, the First World War, late female is really fairly. Sorry, broken. Chris, but you're breaking up on this. Why breaking up on you? We can't hear you very clearly. Can you not? I don't know what the answer to that is. Yeah, it's freezing again. You can't write. Do you want to close it down and start again? You'd all have to come back in if I did. Can you not hear me at all? I'll stop sharing. Okay. Right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, absolutely fine now. Okay. I'll share screen again then and we'll start again. Sorry about yeah. that. Right. We'll have to scroll through.
can you hear me now? Yes, can, uh, yes, uh, Chris, you're fine now. Yeah, it does break up sometimes. Sorry about that. Okay, right, that was the postcards. Oh, yeah, sorry, five star teams um, for the late fee. So that was really quite a small amount. And you do begin to see late fee much more now than you did in earlier periods. Still a mixture of postmarks, you've got hexagonals, circular, some of them still have the old octagonal. The bottom one there is, I think to be quite sure it, it was sent, is put the letter rate on 15 centimes, rather than risking the postcard rate with the extra five centimes. It would have probably gone for the postcard rate, but it's, it's not risked it. By now, virtually all the post offices in Paris by 1900 were able to accept um, late fee material. But some of the smaller offices, you very rarely see them. And the top one there is a small office. It's the only one recorded at the moment for that particular office. And that is the case of a number of the smaller ones, because it really was for commercial mail, not personal mail. Where people did use it for their own needs. And again, you've got the E2 here, which is now is superfluous. Slightly scruffy, but I rather like this one because the new stamps that replaced the Sarge in 1901 were the Blanc for the lower values, Mouchon and Maison. And there you've got all three of them more correctly used. Um, to make up the rate of 55 centimes, um, a second weight step to London, plus um, your five centimes. Rather attractive. And then in 1901, October, they specifically included postcards and printed matter in the tariffs for late female. But you very rarely see printed matter. Printed matter is rare. But you do see it, there's quite a nice one. It's an un, a five signs, it was the unsealed letter rate for an unsealed envelope. So it's five centimes plus five centimes for the late fee, making 10 centimes. Must have been Urgent, urgent Chocolate, Chocolate Puna is the address. And then in the autumn of 1901, they, in some offices, they began to introduce these very large hexagonal cancels. Uh, but they didn't last very long, but 1904, they were disappearing. But uh, I don't quite know why they went for They're quite clear, but perhaps they were too much. Some of the old octagonal date stamps, this is the head post office, were getting very, very warm. Uh, by this period, 1903, 1905, they're almost illegible. But uh, again, 15 centimes still the letter rate, five centimes the late fee. So you've got a 20 motion and a 20 so there, both for the late fee rate. Same addressee here, the first one's the first weight step, and then you start to do a second weight step, the second one, and it's using five centimes for everything. The war largely saw late, it didn't, late feed actually carried on theoretically during the war, but you don't see them. And once the war was over, I think new inventors like the telephone for urgent messages rather superseded the need to send letters late. Late feed becomes quite scarce, if you like, in the 1920s. Uh, it really wasn't used very much. The rates went up. Um, that's by 1923. Uh, we now got 25 centimes for the inland letter rate and 15 centimes for a late fee. You do see them sometimes in conjunction with Express, where they're presumably trying to send doc uh, urgent documents at a late term, um, late in the day addressed to the Westminster Foreign Bank there. So you've got your late fee and your express, plus your postage altogether. Quite expensive, but obviously they wanted to get there in a hurry. Another one there to a sugar refinery in Marseille. 
Well, Lake Three Rape by now is up to 25 song teams, plus the Express, plus the ordinary postage. So 375 in total, which is quite a lot, but uh, clearly they wanted to make sure it got there in time. And then we get another interesting innovation, if you like, um, at, through the railway stations in Paris. At the Gare du Nord, this is the Gare du Nord, if you look at the bottom there, you can see the word delay, D, delay basically in English, delay in French. And the postal official was placed near the platform or near the platform for um, mm -hmm. the foreign trains from the Gare du Nord to this country, uh, to the low countries. He would accept letters at the last moment with a late fee paid and make sure they got into the bag to go on the train the same day or the same time. So that's... They did the same at the Gare du Gare de Lyon. Uh, although I haven't caught one actually, that's what I am, because that's what I'm still looking for. I have seen one, they do exist. So the Garde de Lyon was for Switzerland and Italy. But you also had a late fee at the Gare Saint Lazare, and that was to connect with the um, transatlantic sailings from Le Havre. I mean, at this time, the trans. Transatlantic um, time was were coming down quite drastically. Um, There's a big battle of the blue ribbon, of course, between the different shipping companies, and this was designed to make sure that they could reach a particular sailing in time for it to go on that one. So again, you pay the twenty-five cent team extra on top of your normal postage. And again, you would have it handed in at the special box at the Gare Saint Lazare. But you do get ordinary letters. I mean, there is one, a very quite late 1929. It's got one of Peace Mix on it there. It's got a Joan of Arc, 50 centime for the letter, which is a letter eight by then, and 25 centime for the late fee. And this is the last one by, again, it's, it's an express, same address, I think, as, also, as the previous one. It's an express letter with a late fee to Marseille. 1937 is the last um, time that we see late fee letters. They never actually officially stopped stopped it, it just disappears from the tariffs that were published. And the latest ones are all in 1937. It, it, after that, it just vanishes altogether. It's just sort of faded away. It was never properly withdrawn. It just stopped being used. And by that time, it was very little used. So there we are. I think that's the last one. Yep, there we are. Okay. Thank you for your attention. I'm sorry, I haven't got any more for you. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, God, Smith. Uh, can I kick off then, Chris? I've got a number of questions, so I'll, I'll ask one, one at a time so other okay. people can get their questions in. <laughs> yeah, um, comparing it to post restaurant material, if mm. you wanted to pay the post, post restaurant fee in advance, so that recipient didn't have to pay it, you had to make quite sure that the fee was applied to the letter with a separate stamp. To right. denote that. Okay. Um, in the case of uh, late fees, I've seen both cases in your in your display. Some of the stamps represented the fee entirely by itself. Others were sort of integrated into the franking altogether. Yes. Is it does does that add a premium to the cover if there is a stamp which itself is representing that fee it might make a small premium i suppose i mean it's it's, it's quite nice i mean things like the 80 something used for a third late fee uh, 60 plus 20 is quite a nice item but uh, i don't think it makes a vast amount of difference but it probably does make some right. it's quite nice again later on i showed a 75 something size there which is 15 mm. plus the 60 
uh, five times, which is quite, you know, quite a nice, nice little item, certainly. Yeah, I just think of that last cover where you had the two, um, I forgot which stamp it was now, was it Gregory of Tours, was it? The two, the yes, two large members. Yeah, with the Express. Yeah, yeah, and, and you've just got that single stamp there paying the, uh, the, mm. the, the I thought that was, that's a superb cover, yeah. They're quite fun, they are quite fun. Can I ask my second question? I'm intrigued by this postal worker who was standing at the, was it the Gare du Nord, mm. late, late mail. Did senders of this mail have to frank their letters in advance or was there? Or I was think there they would have had to. I don't know, he might have been given some stamps. I honestly don't know. Um, yeah. It would have been, it'd have been a bit busy if he was trying to accept them and do the stamp. Well, he, is... he might well have been given a few stamps. Yeah. He was definitely placed, but it was definitely refers to a postal official being by the platforms, whereas at the Gare de Lyon, and I haven't got one, but I, I have seen one, at the Gare de Lyon, it was a box into mm -hmm. which it could be put, but at the Gare du Nord, it was, a, it was a postal official who must have literally stood by the entrance of the platform and collected it from people as they mm -hmm. handed it to them. Yeah. People must have been aware of it, because they do, I and mean, they are rare. I, mean, I, I keep looking out for more of them, but they're, they're very rare. But uh, it, it did work. The opposite was used. I, I just had this sort of this image of someone who wants frantically to get their letter into the post. They arrive at the post mm. office, doors are locked, and they've got this little box into which they want to put their letter, but haven't got an idea what the cost is going to be. So yes. either there must be something written up there, or they were familiar with the process and it had their stamps at the ready. Yeah. Yeah, I quite agree. It could well have been you know, sort of taken it from them and put the stamps on for them, so, you know, tell them how much it was. It's a bit in, quite intriguing. I mean, there's no question it was a dozen, but you know, the idea is sort of giving you know, somebody standing there collecting them. Hmm. Weird. It's absolutely fascinating. Thank you. But this so, only went into, I forget the date now exactly, it was in the 1920s, so it was clearly sort of a special service. I mean, they have it. There's also apparently, although nobody's ever seen it, a collection of the guard autolites for Spain. Nobody's ever seen one, but it's in the race, it's mentioned somewhere. So you know, they have this idea of being able to, you know, people being able to put them on the trains directly very late on. Right, if there's no more questions, I'll stop recording now, I think. It's not, it's not a question, Chris, but it's just sort of my curiosity that that's the postal part. You talked about these letters being sent with an extra fee to make sure they caught a certain packet bow. So presumably people were very familiar with what pack bows were going and what time the sale oh, yes. was. The post offices had... The, this goes way back to the 1840s, really. The post office knew exactly um, the sailings of ships and things like that. And mm -hmm. they would be, there was no, I mean, if you go back to sort of the 1860s, when, let's just say, the United States could go into by different um, lines, the post office would know exactly which one to send it on to make mm -hmm. sure it reached a particular ship, mm -hmm. and no question. And, even into the, certainly up to the 1920s, 30s, with these transatlantic liners, they would have known the sailing, they'd have had all the sailing schedules. Mm. Fascinating. Oh, yeah. Peter Mabry is there, he can tell us all about that. But they did, they, the post officers were very up to date with all the schedules of uh, what was going on and what boats to send, send things on, which direction to send them in to get the quickest route. Thank you. There we are. 